Welcome everyone. If you are being told to dump the reading levels and you're wondering how you're supposed to group your kids, one of the secrets to doing that without reading levels is to actually group kids by reading subskill. So find the things that they're weak in or need help in and group like according to like. Many of you are starting to do that with tests like the Dibbles, um, Acadians, other curriculum-based measures. But maybe you don't have one of those. So we would like to share one here with you today at Reading Simplified that we use inside our Reading Simplified Academy. It's called the Snapshot Informal Assessment. And it is helpful for those of you who don't have any other sources of data to get down to the nitty gritty about what students need or don't need. And so once you have this data, then you can group them and you can meet their needs instructionally. And this is going to tie in very perfectly with the major event that we're hosting here this week called the Level Up Your Reader's Achievement in Just Five Days Challenge. So tonight I'm doing a little prelude to our big event which starts tomorrow at um, Monday that is, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you don't know me, I'm Dr. Marty Ginsburg from Reading Simplified and we streamline reading instruction and accelerate students' reading achievement with our approach. And one of the quintessential Reading Simplified activities that we use is called Swisher. And so this week we are showing a big event, showcasing a big event, to let you try out Switch It, see the benefits, see the power of it, learn more each day. Each day we'll be giving little snippets of information to make you a master of that activity. Not only a master, but also um, a master diagnostician, not just mastering how to do it, but how to deliver it for optimal um, effectiveness. So today, we, I thought I would show you a little bit of how you could assess your kids to know where to start with them in Switch It. This will work with Switch It if you're doing our challenge, and it will work, just work in general, as like I said at the beginning, if you want to group your kids by level. And I've had a little tech trouble today, so I'm checking, excuse me, I'm checking over here on our uh, Reading Simplified page to see if I can find if we're in the right spot. I see we've got some people saying hello. I would love to know where you guys are coming from and what or whom you teach. I'm just going to be checking. Okay, I see it. Don't see any comments yet. You guys need to give me some love because I've had tech problems. And when people have tech problems, you know the stress. So, maybe you're just joining us. My, my goal for you tonight is to discover how one quick assessment can help sort your kids for Switch It, which is what we're going to focus on this week in a major event we're doing. Or, if you're not even enjoying this activity, you can still benefit from this assessment so that you can figure out how to group your kids. And this is a uh, particularly appropriate for any kid who's not yet fluent. They could be beginning, they could be five years old, they could be struggling still at 10 or 15. And if some of their problem, foundational problem is sound-based decoding, then this will help with that. So I see Karen saying hello, and Mary, thank you, and Jody, thank you guys so much for saying hello. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about. How many of you are already a um, inside the Level Up group? That is a Facebook group where we are hosting this major event. So let me show you how to get into there. And that will show you how to snag the, the assessment and how um, to do the, the core activity for this week. So I see some of you are. So I'm going to go over to my groups and get into this Level Up Your Reader's Achievement in just five days. So this is the group where I would love for you to head over. If you aren't there yet, no worries, we can get you in. Here's the ticket. You just go to um, reasonable.com forward slash level dash up offer and you can get in. And then that will invite you over to this Facebook group. Okay? Greg, if you can put that in the chat, I'm not really able to do that today. That would be super helpful. Once you're here, you can then look for guides. Can you see that? This is on desktop, on mobile. It'll be in the upper left-hand corner, a little hamburger 
um, three lines and click that, that will get you to guides. Once you get into guides, it should look something like, it should look like this. Do you see that? Um, start here, prep, this is guide one. So if you haven't joined this event yet, make sure you print out the Switch It guide. That will be what you're going to use this week if you join us in this challenge. But for today, as that prelude, maybe you want to assess your kids as you lead into Switch It so, and the Level Up Challenge. So then go ahead and click into here, the Snapshot and Formal Reading Assessment, and download that. So here's the Switch It Guide. And, well, let me, I should just click from over there. I'm going to click into here, the snapshot, and here you go. If you scroll down a little bit by see more, you'll see the PDF link. I'm going to click on that and open it. And here you have it, folks. This is our snapshot informal assessment. There are three measures here, but two are particularly helpful for the Level Up Challenge. First, you're going to see that you're going to assess select letter sound knowledge. So it's not all of the letter sounds. It's perfectly fine if you want to assess all of them, but to be brief, just to get a snapshot, we're going to select, uh, we're just going to use a few sounds, and that will give you the information about um, the most important spellings that they rec should recognize. Another major me measure is the phoneme segmentation measure. And that is if they hear a word like cat, can they break it up into its phonemes? K -at. This is a pivotal skill that beginning readers need to have. It helps unlock the code. How our written code works, it's through uh, being representing, it's a, through a representation of sounds and symbols. So you have to perceive the sounds. So this measure, the phoneme segmentation measure, will be very helpful towards that end. We also have a nonsense word measure. That is optional. You, you won't immediately need it for Switch It, but what's interesting for this Level Up Challenge is that sometimes kids do better at this by Friday, even though we're not directly teaching how to blend nonsense words, and so, or even real words. So the nonsense word measure, again, is optional. It's helpful because it shows how your students' foundational sound-based decoding skills are functioning, because they can't have read these words before. I'm going to explain these three measures, particularly the first two in a second, but first I'm going to look over and see if we have any questions that I missed. So I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, sharing how it's going and, and let me, and I will, actually maybe I will look on my phone, that would be smarter. Since I'm having tech troubles, normally the comments are just brought into my software and that's not helping me today, so I apologize. We will get this together. <clears throat> Okay, so people are saying hello, they're in the level up, level up. Okay, sound is very hard to hear. Is that still the case? Shoot, I saw that, Jennifer. I don't know what else to do about that because I'm talking loudly. <clears throat> oh, I do, that's not, you've told me that before. I should have remembered. Is that better now, Jennifer? Okay, I've got my comments now so I can see. So let's go back to the, snapshot thank you all for being gracious we will get it together i'm glad we figured this out today so i know how to figure, fix my tech for tomorrow thank you for the love whoever's so uh, empathetic okay so i said that there were three measures letter sound knowledge and phonemic segmentation will particularly help you as we get into this challenge this week you will learn how powerful a switch it is for those two skills letter sound knowledge and phonemic segmentation and actually even phonemic manipulation and as we get through the week, I will show you how to make diagnostic decisions based on where your students are performing with their letter sound knowledge and their phonemic segmentation. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it today because I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but uh, if you know where your kids are now, that will be a, ba a good baseline. It'll help you also figure out where to put them in the Switch It list. Why is that? Because the Switch It lists are organized by phonemic difficulty and letter sound knowledge. So this over here is the Switch It guide that you should get for free if you go into our Facebook group and go to guides, you should find this. And notice here we have these colorful levels. They represent 
levels of difficulty. So CVC is um, consonant, vowel, consonant, three sound words like cat. That is easier to segment than down at the bottom there in the yellow, um, like a five sound word or a six sound word like um, stomp. That's a lot harder to segment, right? St, a, m, p is harder than k, at. So that's the progression from CVC to CVCC for sounds where the consonant cluster is at the as at the end, and CCVC where the consonant cluster is at the beginning. Five sounds in the green there, or six sounds. So that's a phonemic difficulty that progresses. But also, as you get into these lists, you'll see, well, maybe I need to focus my students on A and I, short A and I, A, I. Um, maybe I'm going to give them something more challenging, like several vowels. Like here, we have A, E, and I. Over here, we have A, E, and U. So those are two variables that help you decide where to put your students. That's why it's really helpful to know where they are. And the snapshot will give you that information. Okay, so let's look at the, the select letter sound knowledge measure. This is it. It's just one page and it's just the selection of what we call the basic code. That is the consonants, short vowels, and consonant digraphs. Down there at the bottom, those are digraphs, C-H, Ch, Th, T-H, Th, C-K, K, W-H, W. And up at the, and actually even further down, you've got your short vowels. That's what we're normally asking kids to, to recognize is this A, E, I, A, A. So what I do is simply cover up the bottom section of this form and ask them to read the first sounds. What, what are these sounds? S, M, T, P. And we record how they do on our recording sheet. So that's right here. Um, as part of the snapshot, you would get a scoring sheet. So here, if they miss S, I might mark a line through it. If they miss M, mark a line through it. And then tally how they did. And so on and so forth down the page. If they get to the short vowels and they say A, you could say, yes, you're right. What else could that be? And you're trying to get to the short vowel sound. So that's all there is to the, the letter sound knowledge. Pretty simple, right? Are there any questions there? Kat just asked, do we have access to this? Yes, if you are inside our Facebook group for this Level Up Challenge, you can go to Guides and you can get the snapshot. It is in this guide section. So the other measure besides the um, letter sound knowledge that can be super helpful for directing our students at the beginning of Switch It is the phoneme segmentation measure. And that is just simply orally pronouncing words for your students and seeing if they can um, tell you the phonemes or the individual sounds. So here's the scoring sheet right here in the colorful section. You're actually not going to show your student anything for this because you're just going to see if they can orally segment. So you would ask them, okay, um, I'm hearing the, I'm thinking of the word sit. Can you tell me the individual sounds in sit? And so they would get it right if they go sit. They don't have to show their fingers, but they have to say those sounds. If they said s and it, and in other words, linked the I-T, you would say, well, it is two sounds. Can you tell me what the first one is in it? And see if they can get to the point where they can break it up or segment it and say it. If they can't, and they can just come up with a s, then they get one point. But the total that they could get for that would be three. And then you go through, you get progressively harder just like the switch it list. At first you start here with three sounds, then you go to four sounds, and then five sounds. With either of these measures, this is, by the way, it's just a, um, an informal measure, meaning it's not been um, studied and, and to the point where there's a fixed, precise, delivery. So go with how you feel is appropriate for your student and their motivation and their interest. So you can uh, discontinue it at any time. 
but usually if there's two three in a row um, that they're frustrated with I probably would stop everything I've told you today and actually more is here on the snapshot procedures page so this is just a big overview you can also read this as another way to figure out for sure what you need to do and Leslie says thank you my pleasure all right let me know any other questions so those two letter sound knowledge phoneme segmentation super helpful for figuring out where to put your student for switch it how does that work well um, where's my switch it sampler here we go say your students are able to blend three sound words on the assessment that you just gave them they can not blend I'm sorry they can segment three sound words so for switch it we're gonna go one step higher harder because you're going to be there to instruct them so you want them to have something to reach for so as you see here that means you're going to skip past this purple section and the three sound level because that's what they're already able to do let's challenge them by going to the cvcc level consonant vowel consonant consonant level or maybe even the slightly harder one there in orange so that's one thing that's going to help you the other thing that's going to help you is to notice which digraphs, which short vowels, maybe even consonants did they not know. If they didn't know short A and short I, then you would probably start in one of our first lists, which start with A and I. So that's the big picture of how this works for the snapshot and switch it. Again, we have a, a even more optional measure with the nonsense word reading measure. Um, these will not tie directly to switch it, but it could be a nice pretest because you will see progress with this. So for the nonsense word list, I would do the same thing as I do with the letter sounds. I would cover up the bottom and reveal like one line at a time. And the goal is for them to read these words say, and just let them know these are nonsense words. They're, they're not real. But what would, it, what would we say if we saw this, if it was a real word? And again, you have a scoring sheet. And again, the words get progressively harder and even move up to multi-syllable words. So you would score them here. Um, probably just one point for each one correct. So for SAF and MOT, they could get a total of two points to go over here and total it up. And that will be a helpful guide for you to for seeing progress, but also for uh, realizing maybe where there's a breakdown. Maybe they're okay with short vowels, but when you get into um, long vowels, which we call the advanced code, long vowels is, includes, or rather, long vowels are part of the advanced code, or maybe they get into multisyllable, you see more breakdown. So that'll be helpful um, diagnostic information, but it's only optional because it won't directly relate to switch it. So again, if you just got here late, the skinny is go to your guides in the level up group up here to guides and if you can't if you're on a phone go to the the left hamburger lines um, in the upper left corner of your phone once you're in guides you can see guide number one you'll be able to scroll down to download the snapshot informal reading assessment and just give the letter sound knowledge and the phoneme segmentation me measure optionally also, you may already have this information and you can figure out where your students are and where to start them based on other information that you have. It could be that it's you've used the dibbles or the cadence um, or any other measure might have already kind of pinpointed this information for you. So you can eyeball it and start with that. You do not in any way need to use our measure. It's just an option for those who um, don't have anything else. Okay, so now I'd like to show an example of me delivering the snapshot informal assessment to a struggling reader. Okay, so this is just to give you a, an, um, a sense of how it might go. And, uh, and then I'll answer your question. So it's a little, I think it's less than five minutes to watch me deliver this assessment for a child. Again, this assessment is in the guide section of our Facebook group. And ask questions and some of our experts here will answer and I will answer others as well when we're finished with this video example of, of me delivering the snapshot informal assessment to a struggling reader. Here we go. I just want to know um, which sounds are really easy for you and which are still things we need to work on. Okay, so just tell me the sound. S mm. 
Ja. K. D. N. U. D. Ja. <lacht> also, das sind die. R. F. K. J. What else could that be? You're right. But what else could it be? G. Yeah. G. G. O. N. J. Nice. That's what. What? And this is. How did I forget? You know that one. All right, last ones. A. Okay, it could be A. You're totally right. What's the other sound? It could be. Wait, they sound the same. They're similar. A. 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 Ah. Yeah. It's most likely up. 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 Very nice. Okay. Let me just make a note or two, and then we'll do another activity. What did you say this one again? was again? A. It can be A. Uh. It can be A. Uh. The one that is kind of common in the short words is A. Uh. A. Uh. Yeah. You want to know A? Uh. Okay, now we're going to just do a game where you tell me the sounds in words. So you just listen to me, and then tell me each individual separate sound. So, um, what are the sounds in sit? It. Nap, like I take a nap. Nap. Top, like the top of my head. Up. Perfect. How about help? Up. Fast. Fast. Oh, you are fast. <laughs> Spot. Spot. Okay. How about stand, like to stand up? Stand. Frost. Frost. Blink. Blink. Can you separate the sounds in ink? Blink. Wow, that was great. That can be tricky. You nailed it. Okay, how about some more nonsense words? They were kind of funny before. Let's do these. So I can just kind of. Yep, just tell me what Seth that. Yep. Mant. Sot. Let's check that one again. Sot. Sot. Okay, keep going. Plan. Burled. Breast. Glam. Sprung. Spring. Spring. Split. Splat. Spliced. Which one is that one you just said? Spliced. Oh, okay. Good fix. Oh, I remember that one from a while ago. Strapped. Wow, good noticing. So you did those really well. Um, what would, what, let's try this one again. Strap. Strap. Spread. Spread. Yeah, good fixes. Okay. Wow, how about some words with more than one chunk? Well, maybe I soon will come to words with more than one chunk. Let's see. A few more for me, okay? You're just doing great. Roof. Ralph. Mm -hmm. Flues. Parked. Oh, these are easy, but I like them. Good. Zanf, Priffity, Hipping, Brand, Parental Butter, Parental? I don't know. Okay. Onigigli. Okay, that's good. They're <laughs> yeah. really funny now, aren't they? Trend Flat. Ugh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I can't even say that. <laughs> Thank you. That was really helpful. So that was an example of our snapshot informal assessment. 
and I am just interested if you guys have some questions about it. Normally I bring them up here on the screen and I'm so happy to do that. It's not working today, but I can see you over here on a different screen. So if there are any questions about this, let me know. Cat asked the age. I think he might have been in the first grade, but I'm not sure. How many of you have found the Switch It Guide? That's the most important thing. You don't have to do the assessment, but if you get the Switch It Guide and print it out and cut up your letter sum cards, that will make you, you know, uh, an A-plus student for tomorrow getting, start, getting started with a Level Up Challenge. Maybe you don't have any questions. Who's excited? How many pros do we have in the house? How many of you have done Switch It before? Jenny says she noticed her kids turn nonsense words into real words too. Yeah, he was trying to do that with the, that test at the end. It, it's, on the one hand, it seems like it's a good thing because um, we always want them to be making sense. But on the other hand, he was just, you can tell he's not being very meticulous about going left or right and looking at all the sound. So I was a little bummed about that. Jennifer says it's her fourth challenge. Stormy says a few times. Brenda's doing it every day. Deb loves Switch It. Trisha found the snapshot or the Switch It Guide. Uh, Julie has found the Switch It Guide. And Jody has used Switch It with success. Okay. I appreciate you pros coming here and supporting the new folks. Do you remember the time that you first discovered Switch It? And what you experienced either working with a child yourself or maybe watching a video about it? You know we're going to have hundreds if not thousands of people doing that this week. And it's super exciting to see because it's inevitable that people are blown away by what they what they experience right so Deb asks a great question where would I start with this boy I didn't <laughs> I didn't take notes on the assessment he was pretty good let me see he was pretty good with the that is a very good question Deb why didn't I prepare for that thank you um, he was pretty good with the, the segmenting, wasn't he? Um, we had like the words, how did he do? If anybody can remind me, because I was worrying about my tech instead of how he was doing. So when he got to words stand and frost and blink, I know he, I think he kind of clumped together the, some of the ink sounds, but um, I think he was okay with help and fast and spot or at least close. What do you guys remember about that? If he was close on those four sound words here, um, he, he would definitely start at five sounds and I would be ready to move him up rapidly to six sounds and nonsense. So there aren't very many six sound real words that you can do. You can change stomp to stump to stump to slump, but you kind of run out. So then we get into, um, and then we get into nonsense words. So if you have spliss, change spliss to sploss, change sploss to sprost, change sprost to sprass, change sprass to sprant. Um, Jenny thinks that he only made one mistake with ink. Um, thank you, that's helpful. You think he would, so he did pretty well with the five sounds. Awesome, you guys. So if he did well there, then we would we would probably maybe do one or two five sound words and then plan on getting into nonsense, um, rather six sounds and probably even the nonsense words the very first day. So we're I'm going to go into the Switch It Guide, which if you haven't found it, it's in the Facebook group in the Guides section. And we only gave you a sampler. This is not the complete list of what members get inside the Reading Simplified Academy where we have paid membership to do a complete training. But um, yeah, if he was able to do some of those five sound words, we would probably start him on maybe the end of this, this last list here, 17D. The word black to clack and clack to cluck and blend to blonde. And that might be not too uh, not that hard. So then I would start making up nonsense words. If you put SPL or SPR or um, spool, spur, am I missing any others? Those are the big ones um, at the beginning. And then you change the vowel and you could put ST at the end, NT at the end, ND at the end. And you just move every position of the word. That's how switch it works because you're really challenging them. That's a great question, you guys. 
what else am I missing? Jennifer's pointing out that Switch It is pivotal, but it's just one part of the whole lesson plan. We are not implying that Switch It is adequate for teaching everyone how to read. We're just trying to show one super powerful activity. So Jennifer says she uses the whole three-part lesson plan with her students, and that has been the core of her phonics instruction for all of her students. We do whole group and small group lessons. Thank you, that's helpful. Deb's noticing that she wasn't sure he was really getting the ah, sounds short ah. So if he um, doesn't do that great at that, then that would help Deb figure out where to pinpoint. So maybe five or six sounds and then focus on a lot of short O's. But with Switch It, we're always switching the vowels in and out because that's what challenges him. I'm actually getting ahead of myself because that's some of the secrets you're gonna learn this week. Um, so, oh, Kim is asking a good question. and. Um, in the full reading simplified program, do you see the games as being foundational or are they a nice bonus and give some variety and reinforcement? And Stormy said the games are foundational. Well, it depends on what you mean by game and, you know, instruction. So is Switch It a game? I consider it foundational. Is it, and maybe it's not a game. Um, we, um, so Switch It is foundational. Read It can be considered to be a game by many kids because uh, they love the dry erase boards. That's another one of our core Reading Simplified activities. But then to um, send off kids for practice is, I guess it's kind of a question of, it's foundational to get to play games for independent practice, but you might need less of the teacher's time for that. I often think of games as being something the kids are more capable of doing independently. So that's just a different way of thinking about it. When I'm working with the child, I want to be, I want to push them and our core activities, switch it, read it, sort it, write it, do that the best. If you get your kids engaged, as Jennifer says, then the kids think it's a game. Okay, I think mostly we're getting our pros here um, pinch hitting for me. They're doing a great job and so I think we should wrap it up. I'm not seeing any questions that haven't been answered. And if I did miss something, I apologize. Just to wrap this up, most importantly, we would love for you to join us in this Level Up Challenge if you aren't already. So Greg's gonna drop the link and join that free event starts tomorrow. Today's just a little prelude. We're going to show you one activity, we call it Switch It. When you join, you can get inside our Facebook group, go to guides, and you'll get a Switch It guide, which I've been showing you. That is going to be the main thing you're gonna use all week. Each day, we'll drip out a little bit more of the secrets of this activity, the, the secret sauce each day that makes it so powerful. We'll also watch a student progress across the course of the week. So you can go to guides, snag this, and you can also go there to snag the snapshot informal assessment, but you do not need to, it's optional. If you have enough data or you've listened to your kids, you kind of eyeball it, go ahead and pick a level where you think that it will be challenging for them and just start. That's all we do. Don't make a big deal out of these hardcore, as if it's a hardcore decision, just jump in because as you watch your students, you get diagnostic information that will help you plan and get more into instructional match the next day. And we'll be, we'll be coaching you in that process all along this week. So have you joined Level Up? That's number one. Get everything ready. And if you think it'll be more fun to share this with a colleague, then invite them too. We've got some prizes. Oh, in fact, I forgot. Greg already drew a prize. So once you get in our Facebook group, then we have what we call a maze, which is just to get the big picture about this, this event. There are three videos that you can watch, or uh, three posts. And you start here, this one that says hi there. And you do what it says, or read it, and then go to the next one. And if you do all three posts, or posts of the maze, then you um, can win a prize. So tonight's winner, 
from whomever has finished that. Greg drew for us, so thank you, Greg. And let me show you the winner. Okay, here's the video for the selection of our winner. Congratulations to Kara or Kara Peak. She is going to snag um, the entire Switch It guide, what's only available to members. So not just a few pages, but the entire pa packet of all the word lists that we have. So thank you for participating. Tomorrow we're going to have a couple more prizes and it'll be exciting. Congrats to Kara. Yeah, Stormy put so many names right. Greg did all that work. Isn't that awesome? Um, and so much participation. So Kara Peak. Um, if someone could maybe tag her here, then um, Greg will be reaching out to you via Facebook Messenger to figure out how to send you that gift. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your patience with some of my tech challenges. We will get it right tomorrow, right? Bring your friend tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going live to introduce the big kickoff of day one of the Level Up Your Reader's Achievement in just five days challenge. And we'll be dropping some winners along with some... Um, core teachings about how to make Switch It work for you and your students. Here's to making great readers.